When he took over as USA Revolution coach back at the beginning of June, Tom Ellis became the first former Revo player to do so. And uh, Tommy, first of all, welcome to Florida. Uh, I see you're uh, prepared for the occasion in your USA shorts there. I am. I am ready to go. Uh, let's focus on the game last night first. Uh, let's let's talk about that first. Uh, give us your general thoughts. I think one of the things we were talking about during the pro uh, broadcast was that uh, in addition to all the young players, you brought in two veterans, uh, Dustin Jones of Tampa Bay and John Waring of Philadelphia, who had been in this program since its infancy. And it paid off in spades. Uh, what, I mean, obviously, they, uh, you were hoping to get a lot of experience from them. Talk about that and their effect on the team. Yeah, those guys have been around since 2000. Um, when they first came on, they were little kids, you know, and, <laughs> and now they're men, and they've got so they, they, you know they've got more footy knowledge than anybody else really in the U.S. The whole idea was them to bring that game to the young guys. You got to look at a lot of these teams around the league with the younger guys. Some of them have never even played with an Australian, right? So they're learning from TV, they're learning from what they see everywhere else. So to be able to bring a guys like that in that can talk their language to them, American Australian football to them, right? That, that's what we brought him in for. Now, one of the things you did when you first took over was um, you had written a letter to the league in general and, and sort of asked for help uh, from each of the teams, from the coaches, to help mine talent and help develop that talent. What sort of feedback have you gotten so far? Yeah, it's been fantastic. I basically make calls to every coach, every president in the league, um, and it's all been very positive. They're all happy to hear from me. Um, they want us to win. I mean, they want us to continue to grow because that, that helps them. And so at this point, it's just been nothing but positive. What, uh, you know, obviously you're looking to build on the eighth place finish, uh, which unfortunately was the, uh, was the lowest finish in International Cup history. Uh, what are you bringing in tactically to help change that? Um, I'm not really sure if we're going to bring anything tactical that's going to make a huge giant change of anything. I think the biggest thing that I want to bring is a, a culture of winning. Right. Um, I want to bring in what it takes to win at, at the at the highest levels, mm -hmm. uh, fitness wise. What it takes as guys grow as as a club. I want I want to make this a, a true club feel with the entire U.S. building on it. Um, so on, I'm, you know, I don't know if it's going to be a real tactical change. Right. It's just going to be more of getting a winning culture uh, at, all across the league. Right. What have you seen now, having been at this at, at that level as a player? Are you? How different is the view from the top, so to speak, as a, as a coach? Is it is it feel similar to when it was a player, or are you seeing things that you haven't really seen before? I think the biggest. Um, difference from when I left is the fitness level. The fitness level has definitely come up. Um, that, uh, from from one to, to twenty eight is a much more even fitness level. Right. So that that's been really positive. Um, the footy knowledge. Take Dustin. Yesterday was a great example. He hasn't played much in the last five years. He comes right. in and dominates. Right. So it, it, it's great, but at the same time. He's still one of the better players. Yeah. We've got to continue to grow to get more Dustins coming up through that league. Right, and one of the things I think, and I've mentioned this uh, several occasions, when they talk, you look at players uh, that are being recruited, like a Jason, like a Jason Holmes or an Eric Wallace. But our key is, I mean, the key really is to get players that are 17, 18, and have them grow through the system. What would you like to see happen with the program from that respect going forward? I, I really want to start seeing more college guys that are just getting out of college starting. Right. It's really tough to, as a 17, 18-year-old to get a parent to, to allow them to come out and do what we need to do physically and all that because it's just they think they're going to get hurt. But a college kid that's just got out of a D1 program or a D2, D3, whatever it is, they're going to be bored. They, they get done with their sport and they're done. I want to get those guys. I want to build a really big platform for them to be able to come out. The biggest key for that is them knowing that we're here. Right. So that's going to be our, I mean, we're going to really focus on that. Because if you can get a lot of college age kids that are just coming out of D1 programs, D2 programs, which you're talking thousands upon thousands of kids, right. you build it where they know they come to us, that's where it's going to blow up. Right. Now let's talk about Canada tonight. Um, what are you expecting out of them tonight? Oh, they're, 
from what I saw yesterday with them running around, they've got they've got good skills. They've got some good looking players. I saw the video from 2013. Saw them playing 14 on some of the videos there. They're good. They they know what they're doing. They're about the same level as us. And every time we play them, it's a knockdown drag out. So that's what I'm expecting. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll get that and hopefully a, a USA victory. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for sitting down with us. Good luck tonight and good luck the rest of the way and uh, as we head towards IC17. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tom.